On October 1st of 1866, a man or an astronomer by the name Robert Luther discovered a really interesting asteroid that he later named Antiope. This was the 19th asteroid to be ever discovered and since this was so long ago we actually forgot about it until the year 2000 when we've discovered that this particular asteroid actually was very very interesting. Today we're going to talk about 19 Antiope and see what happens when it decides to visit planet Earth. Welcome to What The Math. So we're going to be talking about one of these objects in the asteroid belt and today we're actually going to create this using Universe Sandbox 2 and I'm going to show it to you why this particular object is actually kind of exciting and kind of interesting. Um, so 16% of all asteroids uh, or approximately 16% of all as asteroids actually have a partner. Most of them are actually a double or possibly even triple asteroids and uh, the, um, Antiope is actually one of those asteroids. So this is, let me just zoom in first so I can show you what it looks like. This is an asteroid that's approximately 87 kilometers in uh, diameter. And so it's actually a little bit too big here. We're going to make this a little bit smaller. And the exact name for this asteroid is 90 Antiope. So Antiope is um, a name from Greek mythology. It refers to the mother of Amphion and Zethus, which were uh, Greek mythology characters. And uh, here, um, so this is basically it. And in terms of composition and everything else, this is a typical asteroid. It has a little bit of water on the inside. It has a lot of uh, carbonaceous materials and so carbons and stuff like that. And uh, the, this type of asteroid was po possibly responsible for bringing a lot of carbons and a lot of water and a lot of other stuff to our planet Earth as well. But here's the really interesting thing about this particular asteroid. Turns out, and this is what we discovered in 2000 uh, by basically looking at this asteroid in, in more detail, turns out that this actually is a completely binary body. It's essentially two asteroids orbiting around one another at a distance of approximately 171 kilometers which sort of looks like this. So there's actually two of them orbiting around one another and this one is known as S2091. So essentially we've discovered that uh, this this body that w w actually appeared to us as a big blob from a distance is two bodies that are almost exactly the same in terms of size and in terms of shape as well. Uh, both of these are approximately 86 kilometers in diameter and both of these have a relatively similar mass. I think their mass is only about 2.5% uh, in terms of difference and they're essentially orbiting around one another in a almost circular manner. So if you were to look from the top here, they're actually basically just orbiting around one another. I think this is not actually the best representation. The best would be if I were to recreate a new, uh, a new system here. And using this new simulation, we can kind of recreate how they basically move around another. So they're essentially flying around this berry center in the middle that they can create by selecting both objects, right clicking on this and choosing create berry center. There it is. You can see the berry center is right there in the middle. And uh, it's they're really, really close to each other. There is essentially um, like if you were to stand on, on the body right here, you can do this by pressing uh, C. If you were to stand on this asteroid and if you were to basically look up, you would see a very, very, very large body orbiting around you. So that's actually pretty awesome. And um, if we were to ever visit asteroids, I think this is actually the first one we should choose because not only is it really exciting to try to land here, but it's also very possible that both of these asteroids have quite a lot of things to teach us about asteroid formation, about uh, various things that arrive to Earth from these asteroids. And there's also very, very good opportunities for mining here because we can basically discover all kinds of precious metals and all kinds of really interesting stuff that uh, if we don't find on one of the asteroids, we can actually just go into the other one and try to find it there. But this is actually really unusual in that they're both very similar in size and that they have a very circular orbit around one another. And approximately every 17 hours, they essentially make one orbit around one another and their eccentricity here is almost circular. There's actually almost no eccentricity at all. And um, every once in a while, they'll kind of 
hide one another and this is when their brightness their total brightness actually decreases and we can detect this from earth and this is actually one of the reasons why we kind of discovered that this was a dual rock and not just a single rock because when the scientists started to look back at this asteroid using a much more advanced telescope and this was actually a telescope in hawaii called cac2 and when they've taken a look at it again they discovered that there were actually two bodies here i know that first it was actually really exciting for them to find these two rocks they then realized that in terms of naming them it's going to be really difficult because since this was 19 antiope this was technically to be 91 Antiope, but uh, we already have a 91st asteroid, so they had to come up with a new convention for naming these newly discovered dual-body asteroids, uh, of which they've actually found quite a lot since. There's actually, like I said, something like 16% of all of the asteroids that have at least another body orbiting with them. So the new convention now is to put a date in there, put the previous name of the asteroid and then put the number which signifies, you know, how many asteroids are in that particular area. So this is obviously one. If there was another one orbiting with them, this would be two. And both of these asteroids are actually some of the biggest asteroids we have in our solar system. Uh, they, I think they fall under like top 500 largest asteroids, which would, if they were to ever visit Earth, would possibly cause quite a lot of destruction. And we're going to simulate this really, really soon in the game. And these two asteroids are actually part of a family called Themis family, and uh, Themis refers to the largest member of these asteroids. It's a little bit bigger than these two, um, slightly larger, slightly more massive as well. It's kind of like basically if you were to put two of them together, it, they would equal to one Themis. Um, but the largest asteroid in the asteroid belt is obviously Vesta, and if I were to show you what Vesta looks like... There, there it is. It's a lot larger than uh, most of these asteroids put together, actually. Um, but anyway, so let's actually find out. Let's just, let's discover what happens if one day something happens and these two asteroids actually change their orbital path and decide to visit planet Earth. Now we're going to go to a new simulation here and we're going to click on planets, go under Earth and Moon, and let's zoom out a little bit. So let's launch Antiope and zoom into it right away and add another NTOP orbiting around it at a distance of about 171 kilometers here we go all right so here they come they're going to be slowly making their way to earth orbiting around one another and um what's really interesting about uh, this particular simulation is that this is essentially how most of the material on the surface of our planet was delivered to our planet. So I'm not just talking about water, which which is one of the hypotheses uh, that the water came from these asteroids that collided with um, Earth after it was formed, but even things that you may use in daily life, including things like gold, things like platinum, um, a lot of precious metals, a lot of heavier metals that we use, um, even in creation of computers and uh, cell phones and everything else, most of that stuff was actually it didn't come from formation of Earth, it came to us later on um, arriving on these asteroids that collided with our with our planet. Which obviously creates a really interesting um, idea here because we can, you know, if we need more of these materials, all we have to do is create some sort of a mining colony in the asteroid belt and bring all of this material with us because it's probably a lot easier to uh, mine these tiny asteroids than to land on a large planet and try to find materials there. But anyway, so they're about to collide with our planet and it's probably going to cause a lot of fire, a lot of explosions, a lot of destruction. And before it happens, take a guess. Where, is, where do you think it's going to land? Do you think your country will survive? Let's find out. My country of Canada might actually survive because, uh, or at least my city where I was where I was raised might survive. But um, let's find out what happens. So we're going to slowly make our way to the planet Earth. And I'm fairly certain that... Um, the, there won't be any there won't be any serious uh, climate changes, so we might not really lose too much things. We might actually not uh, our, our temperature might not change too much, but because these two large rocks are much much larger than even the rock that collided with Earth 65 million years ago and essentially was responsible for um, the dinosaur extinction, uh, these two rocks are still not large enough to cause a dramatic change on Earth. Uh, they will definitely cause a lot of tsunamis and earthquakes, but they will probably not um, not cause any serious like melting of ice caps or any serious evaporation of the entire oceans uh, on on our planet. But we'll see what happens. So it looks like we're coming toward um, 
possibly Asia uh, or Central Asia and possibly Africa. And at this point right here, this is when the gravity of Earth is stronger than the gravity of these two rocks and they actually start stop orbiting and they start just approaching Earth. Um, there is something else that that is going to be added to the game soon called Rush Limit Simulation, which will allow these rocks to start breaking up into little pieces as they approach an, an object that has stronger gravity than them. And I've talked about Rush Limits in one of the previous videos, but looks like we're coming toward possibly Saudi Arabia and we'll possibly also crash in the ocean. We'll see what happens. So, don't forget, there's going to be a very, very large shockwave, so your country might still not be safe, even if it's on the other side of this planet. But let's find out what uh, happens. So, here they come. Both rocks are something like 60 kilometers in radius. They're actually a little bit smaller than that, but in, in the game, they have uh, they have a slightly larger size, and that's okay. We're not going to worry about that too much. Here they come. This is We're going to change this to almost real time. This is uh, six seconds per seconds. And they're approaching at a speed of about, what does it say here? 10.1 kilometers per second. Their speed is going to accelerate just a little bit as they approach our Earth uh, surface. But um, yeah, it's going to be around 11 kilometers per second by the time they collide. And it looks like they're going to be hitting the Indian Ocean right below Saudi Arabia. So this will obviously create a very large tsunami, which will most likely wash away the entire coast of Western India, Sri Lanka, uh, Madagascar is going to be gone as well. Most of this African um, area here will be also covered in water. And of course, Saudi Arabia will become, it will change from the driest place on or one of the driest places on earth to possibly one of the wettest in about three, two, one, boom. All right, so here comes the shockwave, and here comes the explosion. Very, very, very large explosion. Very beautiful, very large explosion. Let's accelerate this a little bit. And don't forget, there's also going to be fragments coming out of this um, collision, which will land everywhere on the planet. And it's very likely that even the cities on the other side of this planet will possibly uh, be devastated by these fragments that will still land everywhere. Okay, so the shockwave that sort of cover this area will probably have destroyed most of these sort of regions here come more explosions more stuff landing everywhere and so if if your country was anywhere in the middle east um or anywhere in india pakistan any of these countries afghanistan and so on uh you're probably dead by now and i'm sorry sorry about that but we're, this is not over yet, because we still have fragments landing, and these fragments are all, each of them is actually pretty large. Uh, like This one is about 862 meters, almost a kilometer in size. So, so each of these fragments, when they land, they also cause a dramatic devastation. So let's see what happens after a while. But as you can see, nothing really uh, dramatic has occurred yet. In terms of temperature, the temperature is still about the same. Um, this will obviously devastate this, this entire region including Southern Europe that will possibly receive a lot of earthquakes. Like Turkey might actually be devastated as well. Um, Italy, possibly Greece. And um, the other side of the planet will very likely still experience shockwaves, but may not actually have a devastating effect that th this immediate region will receive. I'm going to accelerate this a little bit more just to see where we have some of these fragments land. And usually you can tell where the fragments have landed by the large orangey fire that you kind of see appear there. So it looks like uh, North and South America are fine, Australia are fine. Most of the East Asia is okay as well. And uh, it's really the Southern Europe, most of Africa and most of um, Central Asia and India that will possibly receive most of this destruction. And after about four days of after the collision, it looks like the rest of the Earth is fine. And the fires of Indian Ocean are still burning. Uh, most of the ocean here would probably very likely evaporate, creating um, a huge, huge steam cloud. And obviously all of this material that has been sort of evaporated uh, with the collision will most likely cover the atmosphere with a soothy like material for at least several years, which will very likely cause, um, well, first of all, it will actually decrease the amount of light that will 
that will re reach our planet, will cause these really strange clouds in the atmosphere. And a lot of this, um, a lot of this material will also probably be kind of toxic. So people that haven't really been killed yet might experience poisoning from this toxic cloud that will possibly tra start traveling around the Earth and reach different countries as well. Uh, but if you if you're not dead from the explosion, if you're not dead from tsunamis, if you're not dead from the poison cloud, you're still probably going to die slowly from all of the starvation that will follow this because the cloud that will be all over the planet, um, the crops will not receive sunlight and many, many crops around the world will start dying. And unfortunately, um, people will actually still kind of suffer from all of this because the uh, the atmosphere will, will be covered with all of this soot for at least five years. Um, and we've actually experienced this before. Um, if you read the history, uh, one of the reasons the so-called um, Irish famine or famine in Russia occurred something like 150 years ago or 200 years ago was because of a very large eruption um, in Indonesia. So right around here, there was a very large uh, eruption of a volcano that released a lot of the material into the atmosphere that sort of traveled around the earth for two or three years. This essentially caused many crops in Ireland and Russia to, to be devastated, to essentially die. People started starving. This is uh, the famous famine in Ireland and famine in Russia. And, um, and because of this, uh, because of this famine in, um, in the 1800s, many people from Ireland and many people from Europe moved to North America. And this actually was one of the reasons why North American immigration exploded during that time and obviously led to United States becoming one of the more popular places to live and obviously cemented the strength of the United States uh, in the next uh, 100 or so years, creating this this area as the most popular area for immigrants to come to seek new life, especially if they're starving somewhere else. So a collision of this nature will obviously cause many, many dramatic effects on the planet, will probably cause people to immigrate again, and will change the entire face of Earth, um, at least in terms of politics and in terms of different countries, because people will uh, definitely move to a new area where they're not experiencing all of this suffering and all of this hunger that will be caused by this collision. And anyway, so that's essentially a little bit about 19 and TOP and a little bit more about history of our planet and how uh, things like asteroid collisions can actually reshape our history for good. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something from it. And in the next video, we'll talk about something else scientific, space related or mathematical. If you still haven't subscribed, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to Share this video with your friends who might also enjoy watching space, science, and math videos and like to learn using video games. Also, don't forget there's a Patreon page that uh, you can use to support me and to help this channel grow even more. And this obviously helps me make better and high quality videos and allows me to use better equipment in the future as well. And anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later. And as you can see, Earth is completely dead now. Even if you weren't dead before, you're dead now. Thank you, give me later, bye-bye.